the role of the strong leader is once again in the spotlight. Over the last three or four months in the political sphere, we've seen in the UK, you know, all sorts of examples of weak leadership from, from David Cameron through Boris Johnson, through Nigel Farage, through Jeremy Corbyn, all exhibiting various examples of failing to actually achieve what they, they had intended to do. And if you go to the other side of the Atlantic, at the moment with the presidential elections looming, you know, we're worried actually that we would end up with too strong a leader in the US, uh, a demagogue of a leader, I don't need to mention his name, who would actually ignore the views of everybody around him. In the world of business, we are equally confused about whether we want strong leaders or whether we want weak leaders. If you read the literature, if you read what academics and, and thought leaders say, they would say what we want are humble, insightful, empowering leaders, people who get things done through others. There's an awful lot of talk about it. Jim Collins, for example, in his book Good to Great, talks about level five leaders who have this combination of humility and fierce resolve. So that's what the theory says, but then you actually look at which business leaders are in the spotlight and seem to be doing well, we get a bit of a disconnect because the business leaders, of course, that we hear about uh, are typically uh, the swashbuckling, powerful, you know, all-seeing, all-doing leaders. And of course, these people are not humble, um, quiet leaders. They are the exact opposite. So which is it? Which, which do we really think is the right style of leadership to succeed in today's organizations? My answer to that question is that, in short, the right style of leadership depends on the situation. Now, this is an old argument in some case, in some ways. We need, you know, a Winston Churchill-like figure, you know, when we're at war, and we need a much softer, more empowering leader when we're at peace. But we can go a little bit further in terms of making sense of this situation by thinking about the, the typical business, large business, that, that I spend time with today. Are these companies in deep crisis? Usually not. Are these companies where they're very confident that they're on a stable footing and everything's looking rosy? Almost certainly not. Most companies are in that gray zone in between where they're doing okay, they're making decent profits, but there's all sorts of uncertainty on the horizon. There's all these threats of disruption, new technologies coming down the road, and they're not quite sure what the right way forward is. In those situations, you don't want to choose one type of leader or the other. What you need to choose is an ambidextrous leader. An ambidextrous leader is somebody who is capable of playing both these different hands equally well. If you are in an industry where you know that there is a major strategic disruption underway, we actually need a leader who is prepared to occasionally stand up and make a decisive call. It's not going to be possible for us to continue to milk a particular line of business any further. We need to invest in some sort of digital product which actually cannibalizes those existing sales. That is the time when you need a very decisive leader. Uh, I, I was talking a few uh, months back to the gentleman who used to run Apple Computer in Europe. And he says what we actually need for these times in particular times of technological disruptions, we need a benevolent dictator. In other words, we want somebody who is prepared to knock heads together to make the big calls. But it should be a benevolent dictator because he or she is acting in the best interests of everybody around him. And what he's really saying is when you look at Apple, Google, Amazon, Facebook, Oracle, all these big tech companies who've made the big decisive changes. In every case, when you look at it, it's actually a very strong leader, a leader who owns a lot of shares, a leader who has absolute control over the company. They are much better positioned to make the difficult calls. So they know when to step in and make the difficult judgments, when they can tell that the organization is at one of these inflection points where they need to act swiftly. But, and this is the key part of the story, these are not individuals who are always domineering individuals. They know when to step in, but they also know when to step back. They know when actually their job is much more about letting other people fill the gap and fill it with new innovative products and opportunities. 
And of course, that ability to know when to step back versus when to step in, that is essentially the most difficult thing that any leader has to do. Because to do it, you've not only got to have your pulse on the strategic situation facing the company in terms of are we at a time of benevolence or are we at a time of disruption, you've also got to have a good finger on the pulse of your own, your own style and the way that other people interpret you. And you've got to have a certain amount of humanity and you've got to have a lot of self-awareness to be able to say, right now, they need less of me in charge. Giving away power is very difficult, but actually the very best leaders, the ambidextrous leaders, are the ones who know when to take power and when to give it away.